passwords are the gateway to our digital identities. I have been relying on one password to manage all my accounts and passwords in the local world for the past few years. However, as you may know from the recent news, the company is moving in a, let's say, controversial direction, which I do not support. Although this is not the point of discussion today, you can find more about it in the links in the description below. As a one password refugee, I have been trying to find the reliable and trustworthy alternatives. In this video, I'll talk about the reasoning behind my choice of KPath, the migration process, and the choices of client apps on both desktop and mobile. Lastly, I'll talk about the setup of one time passwords. You can find all the relevant links in the description down below. As a disclaimer, I'm not affiliated with any of the software or developer mentioned in this video. I have examined many alternative systems, including Bitwarden, Secrets, and Enpass. However, in the last, I settled on KPath, which is a free and open source password manager operating on its open standard database format, KDBX. There are several reasons behind this choice. Firstly, I will not be logged in by the original software. There exist many excellent clients across all platforms, if one of them is going in a direction I dislike, I can switch apps easily while keeping the same database. Secondly, the open source nature means the code and the standard can be reviewed freely. There have been many independent audits of KPath, making it more trustworthy than the typical proprietary software. Lastly, the database is a single encrypted document ending in .kdbx which can be stored anywhere or synced via any standard cloud storage without needing to subscribe to any additional services nor setting up my own server. The migration process from 1Password to KPath is not exactly straightforward. This has to be done on a desktop computer as 1Password only exports its data from its desktop clients. It also seems that 1Password doesn't want you to export your data too easily. The support article guides you to export the 1P format or the plain text CSV format, both of which are less than ideal. The former is not very well documented, and the latter requires extensive manual calibration to ensure all data is transferred correctly. The best option is actually to convert directly from the 1Password local vote format, OP vote. To obtain the local OP vote, one needs to create a local vote and copy all items in the 1Password account to this local vote. This requires enabling allow creation of votes outside 1Password accounts in the 1Password settings and sync it to a local folder to expose the database. Once the OP vote database is prepared and located, it can be converted to KDBX format the most easily by using KPassXC which is a modernized port of the original KPath. The import option 1Password vote in KPassXC directly opens the OPVote database and converts it to KDBX format. Although the original KPath can also import it with the help of the OneVote plugin. Now all data should have been migrated from 1Password to the KDBX database, except file attachments. Unfortunately, attachments have to be migrated one by one manually. Once finished, you can choose to store the KDBX database anywhere or sync it with any cloud storage. However, as a precaution, you should still keep the one password vote in the rare case of data loss during conversion. The best desktop client is probably KPassXC, which runs natively across macOS, Windows, and Linux. It supports time-based one-time passwords and integrates with browsers out of the box. The original KPath only runs natively on Windows, requiring extra setup to run on macOS and Linux. However, it is more extensible with plugins. For most use cases, I would recommend KPathXC over KPath. There are two actively maintained iOS apps for KPath, namely KPathSim by Android Publitive and Strongbox by Mark Magill. Both are commercial apps in the App Store with a dual license as open source projects. Both offer a very generous free version and a more convenient premium version, which can be accessed 
by either subscription or one-off license. KPASIM also has a so-called perpetual fallback license for annual subscribers, which means those who subscribe for more than a year get to keep the previous premium features forever. Roughly speaking, KPASIM is more minimalist and polished, while Strongbox has more features and options, like checking for compromised passwords and fetch favicons automatically. One major difference is that KPASIM is a completely offline app without any networking code, while Strongbox connects to the internet to directly integrate with Dropbox, Google Drive, and have I been pwned. These convenient features in Strongbox do come with some risk. It is more secure if the app that can read my secrets cannot talk to the outside world. While I use and like both of them, I prefer KPASIM slightly for the above reasons. Although I'm not an avid Android user anymore, a quick search shows that there is no shortage of good KPAS apps on Android, like KPAS DX. One-time passwords require a bit more attention in KPAS. The standard practice is to create two additional attributes, TOTP seed and TOTP settings. The TOTP seed field holds the secret key, while the TOTP settings field usually holds 30 semicolon 6, which means generating 6 digits every 30 seconds. As a bonus, this can also be used to generate TOTP for Steam by filling in the Steam Authenticator key in the TOTP seed and 30 semicolon S in the TOTP settings. It is a little tricky to get the secret key, but with some patience and caution, it can be obtained using the Steam Desktop Authenticator, which is an open source port of the Steam Mobile Authenticator running on Windows when the encryption passphrase is set to empty. The secret key can be found in the .ma file as the string in the OTP auth URL. It is sad to see one password to become increasingly more user-hostile and money-driven. Fortunately, there are excellent open-source alternatives like KPASS and Bitwarden. So far, I have been very satisfied with my adoption of KPASS. In terms of features, KPASS has both advantages and disadvantages compared to one password. For example, KPASS supports additional security with K-File and hardware authentication key like UBK. However, the lack of group sharing feature in KPASS might be a deal breaker for some, in which case, Bitwarden should be considered instead. As a lesson learned, I shall always try to keep my important long term data in some open standard format. Thanks for watching. This is Takian from Imaginary Math. See you next time.